So this is how I increased my conversion rate in listing presentations by 50% over a 12 month period. When I used to go into listing presentations, like I got the opportunity and I went into someone's house, I was very unstructured. I kind of knew what to say when we were talking about certain subjects, but you know, sometimes in conversation, we can jump around, we can get lost, then we can leave a listing presentation without fulfilling a lot of the points that we would need to normally get across. So it's really important to follow a specific structure and get used to that structure. So one thing that really helped me was coming up with a structure in my presentation. So the first thing you wanna do when you go to a listing presentation is build rapport. And I would say that this is probably the number one most important thing that you need to get good at in a listing presentation is just building some commonality with the client, finding topics of interest. Uh, one of the ways that I would do that is when we go into the listing presentation, when you do a tour of the house, which is usually something you might do in the first 10, 15 minutes to talk about renovations and what they love about the house, etc. Look for things that you can have a common interest in. Maybe it's family photos of a vacation. You can ask, oh, where, where was that? Where's that photo taken? They might say, oh, that was when we went to New Zealand. Oh, I love New Zealand. I went there last year. And then all of a sudden you're talking about, you know, some, some sort of common topic. Um, perhaps it's a photo of their kids. Are these your kids in the photo? Oh yeah, that's my, oh, that's my kids and my grandkids. And then you can talk about your family, find some common ground. Just find things of interest that you can talk with about the client. This is very, very important for just building that commonality and that trust. Now, how long should you spend building rapport with a client? Ryan. 20 minutes, but as long as it takes to build rapport. Right? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you goddamn want. <laughs> Honestly, you should spend as much time as you possibly can building rapport. In fact, if you spent two hours at a client's house and you spent one and a half hours of that talking about nothing to do with business, that would be a really good thing. And then you can actually get the business part out of the way within about 20 minutes. By the time you actually started talking about the business, the amount of trust that you've built with the client just from the rapport building uh, will, will probably mean more than anything that you say in your presentation. So rapport, super, super important. And I made the mistake many times in a listing presentation by going in there and going straight to business. And so there was, you know, they had to find trust in everything I was saying about my strategy and everything rather than just getting a feeling for me as a person. So a big mistake I made was not building enough rapport in the beginning and thinking it was all about business. Um, secondly, uh, price. Price is usually, well, usually when, when I uh, go into a presentation, I'll tell the client there's usually three things that every client wants to know. How much is their property going to sell for? How long is it going to take? How should we do it? And what's it going to cost me? Now I'm going to cover all of these things today and show you how we're going to get more money for your property. The reason I've written more money up on here on the board is because it's a phrase that I like to use in my presentation over and over again because it just solidifies in the owner's mind that my intention as their agent is to get them more money. And that's, that's all the client cares about. At the end of the day, that's the only reason that a client chooses you over another agent. You know, building rapport, yeah, that's building trust, but building trust helps them to think that I like this person, they're gonna do a good job for me, they're not gonna do the wrong thing by me, and therefore, by doing a good job, they're going to get me more money. At the end of the day, the trust just helps them to believe that this is a good person, and a good person's gonna do a good job and get me more money. Because at the end of the day, even if there was one agent that they really liked, and then one agent that they thought was a bit slippery, if they knew, if they knew that the one that they didn't quite like as much would definitely get them more money over the nicer agent, they would, they would choose the one that they don't like because at the end of the day, it's, it's a transaction for them 
and the client wants more money. That's all they want. So throughout the presentation, I will always throw in the expression, and this is how we'll achieve more money. Throughout every part of the presentation that I'm discussing, I keep saying this, more money, more money, more money. Because by the end, if I've said that 15 to 20 times throughout my entire presentation, the message is pretty clear. My intent is to get you more money. So after building rapport, we might sit down and say, look, one of the th firstly, we want to talk about what your house is worth. Now, a common mistake agents make, and what I made in the past, is going straight into spitting out what I thought their house was worth. This can be one of the biggest detrimental things you can do in a listing presentation and, and can totally botch it for you. So the first thing you should do when you're talking about price is to ask some questions to see whether or not they are on the same page as you. Because you as the agent should have an idea of where the property sits in, the mar in market value before you go there. But it's important to try and get that out of the client because if they're super unrealistic at this position where they are, as most, uh, as most sellers are when they're first about to go onto the market, their thoughts of their home price are usually above average. And if we go in there and say, oh, we think it's worth this, uh, giving them a realistic idea and their expectations are above, that can be something even if they like you and everything else went well, they can just cut you out right from that moment and go, oh, well, that agent doesn't think my house is worth what I think it is. I'm not going to go with them. So it's really important to ask them some questions. So what sort of questions could you ask them about price? Uh, what's your dream? Dream price? That's a really good question. That's the perfect question you can ask, okay? W what you'll find is if you, if you go in and you ask, oh, so what do you think your house is worth? A lot of, a lot of common answers to that will be, oh, well, you're the agent, I was expecting to hear that from you. Or, or oh, I was hoping you could tell me that. And then you kind of go, oh yeah, well, I, I will go over it. But one thing, that, but people, don't, people don't generally want to tell the agent what they think their house is worth but they're happy to tell an agent what their dream price is, okay? So it's a really good question you can ask, what is your dream price, right? Because no one's, no one's gonna keep that a secret. Everyone's happy to tell you their dream price. From that dream price, which is still usually above average, you can, you can kind of figure out, is this person just a little bit unrealistic or are they super unrealistic? Where are we going to go with this, okay? If they're super unrealistic, what would we do from there? Probably ask them a few more questions, okay? Show them comparable sales. Yeah, yeah, which you can do, but we've got to be careful. If they're super unrealistic and you've got a book of comparable sales that are way lower, you might not even want to show them that book mm. at this point in time, okay? So the question will be, okay, awesome. Um, nothing's, nothing's impossible. Right? We can definitely get, what we would definitely do is get you the highest price out there. And if that price is out there, we'll get it for you. Can I ask you some questions? Have you been looking at other properties on the market? Have you been to some open homes of similar properties lately? Get them talking about other properties on the market that you should, as the agent, know a bit of information about. All right? And then we can get them to start to, to talk and, you know, after a while, if, if they're talking more, you'll start to gauge where they actually think the property is worth, yeah. all right? But if we start to get them to talk more rather than us just going, oh, well, this is the comparable sales here, so it might be around here, you might botch it. Yeah. Get them to talk as much as possible. Um, it may even be, if they're super unrealistic, that you don't even talk about price much more than that. You just, you just go, okay, yep. Like we'll, we'll see if that's achievable because some, sometimes if they're just really unrealistic, then it, it may be a better thing that we just try and list the property today and we, we work on the price over a bit of time. Yep. Okay. Obviously comparable sales, you'll then go through the comparative market analysis and, and show them that um, if you think it's a good idea, all right? Which most, of the, most cases it is, but maybe one in five, you might decide maybe we'll leave the, the comparable sales out today depending on how realistic they are on price. Strategy is the next bit, okay? 
when we're talking about strategy, it's we're, we're talking about is it going to be priced with a price, without a price, going to auction. Now, I'm not going to go into all those different th um, strategies today, but you should know the pros and cons of all of those. And it's really good to ask some questions to them about strategy. What's some questions that you could ask? Have you sold before? <laughs> Perfect. Have you sold before? Have you sold? That is a really good question, and it's a great question to build rapport and find out like what were the positive and negative experiences of when they sold last time so that then you can address those things and, and, and help them to understand that you're gonna do anything that they didn't like way better, mm -hmm. okay? So have you sold before? Yeah, we sold back then, blah, blah, blah. A really good thing to try and find out is were they in competition with other buyers at the time, right? Because if they were and they have experienced that sense of urgency and that feeling of being put in a position where there were multiple offers on the table and lots of competition and they had to pay a bit more, we want to hone in on that, mm. all right? Because that we know as agents that that is the way to achieve more money. So if you ask them, when, um, oh sorry, as a buyer, when you bought the property, have you had those feelings? You can then work on that and say, well, that's the feeling we want to we want to get from all the buyers that are coming through your home. We want to put them into competition and putting them into co competition is going to push your price up. So auction, no price, offers over, standard price, tender. There's about five different ways that we can sell the, sell the house strategy wise. Again, every time we're talking about it, we're going back to this. Always remember to include more money into your presentation. Marketing, obviously important. Now, when we're talking about marketing, one mistake I always used to make was just, go, you know, when I was very new in real estate, is just talking about, oh, this is what we're going to do for marketing. And just basically say, oh, you've got to do marketing. Do you understand we've got to do marketing? Yes. But not helping the client to understand what, how much extra money that more marketing can achieve them. Mm. Okay. Whenever we talk about marketing, the, the only thing most clients are thinking is, oh God, another cost. Rather than this is an investment into your property achieving maximum results. So a small investment in marketing can achieve you a 10x return on what you spend on the marketing, right? So again, when we're talking about marketing, every facet of the marketing, if we're talking about the online portals like realestate.com, okay, we want to be a premier listing on realestate.com because that's where the majority of our buyers are going to be. It's really important we're on the front page of realestate.com because the front page gets 17 times more views than the back pages. If we're getting 17 times more views on your property ad, that's going to increase the amount of inspections we get in on, on an open home. The more inspections we get, is going to lead to more conversations and more offers and the more offers we get is going to push your price up and we're going to achieve more money. And you just you just repeat that same theory about every single part of the marketing that everything we do is to get more buyers through the property which is going to increase competition which is going to increase the amount of offers we get which is going to get you more money. So by the end of talking about the marketing they can't wait to pay for you for the, more marketing because they just feel like, if I do that, I'm gonna get more. Now commission, this is something I've put down the bottom because when I first started in real estate, for the first five years of real estate, I always waited till the end of my presentation to talk about commission. One thing that really helped me uh, later down the track is I actually changed talking from commission at the end to bringing it right up here at the start and just getting it out of the way at the beginning. Because as agents, we always find this the most uncomfortable thing to talk about because we instantly expect there to be some sort of negotiation around our fee. And if it's the last thing to talk about in your, uh, in your whole presentation, the likelihood is you're gonna end up talking about, is, you know, the client's gonna to wanna to talk about, is there any way we can do this for cheaper? Whereas if you talk about it at the start, you can avoid that by saying, hey, I like to be up front. Let's, let's talk about how, how much the fee is to begin with and what, what this is going to cost you. My fee 
is 3% or 2.5 or whatever it is. Now, before they say, you know, we haven't even got into the guts of the presentation, usually the client won't ask, oh, can you do it for any cheaper right at that point because they haven't heard anything else. So if you go, my fee's two and a half percent, the advertising's gonna sit around six grand, but what I'm gonna do right now is I, um, I'm gonna show you the value that I'm gonna bring to get you more money than any other agent. All right, so first let's talk about the price of your home. So, so rather than explaining everything and then going, and this is the price it's gonna cost you, and then they go, it sounds great, can you do that price for any less? We're gonna say, this is what it's gonna cost you, now let me explain the value that I'm gonna to bring to you, okay? Because that stuff is so exciting to the client, this stuff is not exciting to the client. So you start with the less exciting stuff, and then give them the exciting stuff. And by the end of all of that value in your presentation, they almost feel a little bit embarrassed to ask you for a commission discount when you've just showed them all of this value. I'm not saying it's gonna stop it every time, but I did find that it, it decreased the amount of conversations that I had to have about my fee by starting the conversation with the commission and getting it out of the way, okay? So cool guys, that's basically a summary of my structure for the listing presentation. Let's go get some listings.